happy Halloween, guys. It is the spooky season. Well, the spooky season, unfortunately, it's the end. This is when trick-or-treaters take their candy, watch spooky movies at home, do fun activities, and then November 1st. Man, what a wild ride it's been. We got some pretty shit movies, and we got some okay movies, and some really good movies. But I think it's time we end Halloween month off of a bang. So today we're going to be reviewing Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. I did review this movie three years ago, but that review is shit, so let's do it again. How do I start this? Okay, so I think everyone by now knows this is the Michael Myers movie that... That's going to include Michael Myers, so <laughs> there you go. This is, ha this is a Halloween movie that has no Michael Myers. Michael Myers does not appear in this movie, except for a quick scene on the television. So if you think about it, Michael Myers is a fictional character in this movie. Think about that. <laughs> so the movie Season of the Witch, Halloween 3 is essentially about this man who is working at a hospital one night and this guy and this guy comes to the hospital and he's he's losing it. He has this pumpkin mask and he's saying they're coming and eventually he's killed in the hospital and him and uh the guy's daughter seek out to find out how did he die. Uh so they go to the one, the last place he was at, which was a uh, silver shamrock factory, where they make these silver shamrock masks. One being, a, they make these masks, and there's three of them: the witch, the pumpkin, and the skeleton. And you can tell that there's this mystery going on. So they got to figure out what's going on. Let me just start off by saying there are a lot of people who don't like this movie. When this movie came out, a lot of people shit on it because it didn't include Michael Myers. So what do you expect? Here's what I have to say to that. Watch the movie for what it is, because this movie is absolutely fantastic. My friend, who's a big-time Michael Myers fan, or Halloween fan, he's never watched this because he said it didn't include Michael Myers, so there's no point. It's not a sequel. And yeah, this movie does not need to have the number three attached to it. This movie just could have been called Halloween Season of the Witch, but the creators themselves even admitted that if they didn't include the three there, there wouldn't have been a bigger audience, but no one showed up to the theaters anyways because Michael Myers wasn't in there, so it fucked up there. <laughs> My friend absolutely loved this, and he's never seen it before. Well, I remember when I first saw this, I knew Michael Myers wasn't going to be in it, but here's the thing. I'd only seen two Halloween movies at the time, the remake and the original, so when I watched this film, I wasn't going in with high or low expectations. And I came out of it really, really dug in it. Here's why. Yes, it does not include Michael Myers, but there's a lot to enjoy. First of all, this movie is drenched in Halloween flavor. Halloween is literally everywhere. You can't escape it in this movie. You, you see it, you hear about it everywhere in this movie. People are uh, putting up Halloween decorations, uh, you got the Halloween commercials, the Halloween announcements, the masks, uh, the part of the, the end of the movie where people are trick or treating. It's drenched in Halloweenness, and it's just amazing. This movie just has this feeling. It has this feeling that I can't describe, but it's really, really good. And excuse me, and it's just really well done. I mean, everything about this movie is well done in terms of, like, cinematography, storytelling, pacing, the characters. Which, by the way, some people don't like the characters in this film. Here's why I like the characters, mainly. Our main character, he's not meant to be the big, you know, good superhero. He, because here's... Okay. In every horror movie, you have the main character who is, like... Oh, he tries to save everyone, and, you know, for the most part, he saves people. And, you know, you want to see the good guy triumph over evil. And they're usually flawless. Um, or in some cases, you know, they're, they're flawed, but they're trying to make amends of what, you know, mistakes they've made. In this movie, we don't get that. We get an actual real person. 
And here's what I'm talking about. In most movies, the hero would be, like I said, flawed, or he'd try to overcome his flaws. Not in this movie. The character in this movie has flaws, but he doesn't overcome them in the end. And, he, and the movie does a great job at making this character believable because you know that deep down he's a good guy. Like, he wants to do good, but he's a total, total jerk sometimes. He is the most real character you are going to get in the Halloween franchise besides Laurie Strode and Jamie Lloyd. Or uh, Jamie, Jamie, Jamie from Halloween 4. <laughs> this character um, is amazing. He, he just, man, I, I, I can't describe it in, in just like a minute or two. I, I'd have to go like full in depth. Okay, so pretty much, I'll give an example. He doesn't save the girl in the end. He doesn't technically win, for se, in every situation. He, he's a mess. He, he has an alcohol problem. He cheats on his ex-wife. He constantly abandons his kid so therefore he's got flaws but by all means he's not a bad person because if he if it if, if it's a life or death situation where he has to protect his kids he will do that there's a scene where he the first thing he does is he contacts his ex-wife and warns her to save the kids and i'm just like i like that he actually like cares for the kids he tries his hardest to save the ones he cares about, despite how much of a, you know, a douchebag he is. But he's not. He's real. And I really like that. So, okay, you got the main character and, you know, the main female who's really good as well. I can't remember the name, so forgive me. But that you got, okay, you got the interesting characters. Is the story interesting? Yes, it is. Throughout the film, we're, we're surrounded in this halloween feel. And we're in this town that is just full of mystery and you're wondering what is going on what, what's the big deal with these three masks that everyone's talking about and they're trying to figure it out and you're along with these characters that you like and, and you're trying to figure it out with them and it's a great mystery i mean to be fair you do know who the villain is I and mean, he's literally on one of the covers of this movie but by all means there's still some sort of mystery to it it's like okay we know he's the villain but What's his end game? What's his goal? We don't know until the very end, and it's very, very interesting. This movie is very memorable in its imagery. Spoiler alert, everyone knows the kid getting his face fucked by that mask in the silver shamrock jingle that everyone has a hard time getting out of their head. And the villain in this movie is absolutely phenomenal. He gives Michael Myers a run for No, we don't go there. Michael Myers is he's perfect. He's the best villain in a horror movie. Cochran is close, but no cigar. But he is really good, I'm telling you, man. The acting in this is really good, and he sells it. He's, he, in a weird way, it reminds me of um, uh, Shang Tsung in the Mortal Kombat movie, where he's like, he's evil, but he's one of those, oh, you love to hate him type villains. And it's it's very well done. It's very well done. And I'm just going to say it. This probably has the second most memorable ending in the Halloween franchise. Because the ending to this movie still gives me goosebumps. Um, without spoiling it, it's a happy and sad ending. And it, and, it, and it ties in perfectly with the main character who, you know, is a flawed but good person at heart. Where he he doesn't always succeed, but, you know... He succeeds in some moments. Overall, guys, this movie's really, really good. If I had to complain, I'd probably say that there's a few decisions that don't really make a lot of sense. And the ending, like, just a little bit, just like, a little bit towards the ending. It drags a little bit. Let's just say there's, there's something that happens to a person, right? And the one person is trying to avoid dying. And this and this thing that's happened to the person um, has affected that person in some way, right? So you get the one character who's affected by this thing, and the, and the and the one character. And in order to survive, this character has to defeat that character. 
but that character keeps coming back even though we know he, that character should be eh. And it's like, why is this still going? This hasn't happened to any of the other, you know, spooky, evilness, bad guys going on. It's, it's, it's just, it kind of drags a little bit. But after that, it picks up tremendously in the ending. And this movie overall, in my opinion, is almost flawless. So with that being said, I'm going to give this movie an A. Please, do yourself a favor. There's not that much time left this Hall this today, Halloween. Please, if you've never seen this movie, check it out. It's worth it. And if you don't like it, that's totally fine. There are people out there who do not like this movie. But for me and for a lot of other people, it's a cult classic. A classic that deserved to be recognized. But unfortunately, when it came out, it just wasn't. But now, it's getting the recognition it deserves. Stay tuned for my Halloween 4 review. It's going to be fun.